little flow chart of Canadian Electrical Code Section 4, Conductor Sizing. And as I was saying when I made this flow chart, it's all about this. This is what we're doing here in Section 4. It's not too terribly difficult, but it has a whole lot of words. What we're doing is we're taking the amps of the problem, and then we are multiplying by a factor of, um, you know, 0. Point, let's say 0. 0.8 for um, ins insulation temperature. We get that from 5A. And then we're multiplying by a factor of whatever mechanical correction. So like from 5B, 5C, 5D, uh, whatever that correction is going to be for sort of uh, like if it's in raceway or conduit, if it's in free air, like it's for the mechanical configuration of of this, um, of, of whatever setup you have going on. So what you end up doing is, let's say you have like 45 amps that you have to supply, but it's really, really hot. And then it's, uh, you know, like mounted kind of weird, like let's say there's 20 conductors, then you're actually going to have to choose a size from the size table, uh, much greater than 45 that'll handle more than 45 amps, like, I don't know, 70 amps, 60 amps, whatever, depending on the example. So I'm just gonna flip over to these tables to show you what I mean. Let's look at what these tables actually look like. The tables look like this. And you see that table one, table one here, uh, one second here, it just, it says it is for single copper. Table two, Table two is for, uh, let's see, no more than three. So multiple copper, multiple, multiple copper. Uh, table, now table three is going to be for, oops, that's table two. Table three is for one single bare aluminum. It's for a single bare aluminum. And then table four is for multiple aluminum, right? If I can get it on the screen here, it's for multiple and they're aluminum. So that's what those tables look like. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be finding, okay, well, this is the, the environment or the rated temperature that we're going to be in. I've already derated these values. These are the ampacity values that I've already derated with my, um, my temperature coefficient and my uh, mechanical coefficient. I'm going to find that. And then I'm going to go over here and it's going to tell me how big this can be. Now let's take a look at the tables that kind of, you know, um, derate things. So table 5A are the correction factors for um, ampacity for ambient temperatures above 30 degrees. So if you're using say an insulation of T90, then you would go in this column and uh, let's say your ambient air temperature is 55, then you're gonna have to derate by 0.76. Let's look at the other derating tables, 5B, 5C, and 5D. For example, let's look at um, table 5C. It says, it says, hey, what if I have, you know, 25 to 42 conductors? I'm going to have to reduce that impacity, or I'm going to have to increase the impacity or reduce it by 0.6, which is like divide by 0.6, which is increasing that impacity to so that it's a larger size that can handle basically this problem that we have. Um, we have set at it. So let's do an example. Here's an example. A conduit will have seven current carrying T90 conductors. Connected equipment is rated for 75 degrees Celsius. Ambient air temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. What size of conductor is required? If I really needed to move 45 amps, well, the way these calculations work is I have the original, oops, original amps. 
and then I am multiplying it by this factor or dividing by this ratio. So I'm, I'm going to say division. So divided by, and then it's going to have to be um, insulation factor and also divided by uh, the factor that I'm going to find in 5C, which is, um, uh, what do I want to call that factor? Ampacity correction factor for number of conductors. Um, I'm going to call it mechanical factor. And what this will all look like, if I draw it on here, sort of, I'd like to draw it on there as like an equation. So I'd have my original amps. And then um, divided by this insulation factor, divided by a mechanical factor. I like to say times one over. So original amps is uh, 45. And I'm going to multiply by one over, what's our insulation factor? Ah, uh, our insulation factor would be here. So it's T90 insulation. So I need to go into this column and the ambient air temperature in this question I have said is going to be, I forget, 40, I think. So now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna see it's 0 0.91 is this D rating factor I'm gonna use. So 0 0.91 for the insulation factor. And then I'm going to multiply by the inverse of this mechanical factor. Let's see, what is my mechanical factor? I'm going to say, ooh, there are going to be, there are 7 to 24 conductors in here. So the ampacity correction factor is 0.7. 0 0.7 and that looks like a six. It is a 0 0.7. So I need to take my 45 amps and this is going to result in amps. I'm going to take my 45 amps. I'm reducing it by the insulation factor. I'm reducing it by that mechanical factor. That's going to give me um, 70. So I need what this means is I actually need a wire size of that is going to eventually be able to handle 70 amps. Because of all the silliness, um, I'm gonna have to get 70.6 amps. So, but then our next step is which table do we go to? And that's why I made this big flow chart to show you which table do you go to? All right, let's follow it then. We are gonna size some wires they are going to be, well, it doesn't say if it's copper or aluminum or aluminum. So if it doesn't say, then we should probably, we should go copper because by definition, you're not supposed, you're supposed to go copper if it doesn't say anything. Uh, and is it a single conductor? No. Is it one, two or three conductors? No, it's four plus conductors. So here we go to four plus conductors. Is it in raceway or conduit or underground? It's in raceway or conduit. So we have to go to table two, and we already applied our factor of 5C. So let's go to table two. Let's go to table two. Uh, this is table two, this is table four, which is aluminum. Let's go to table two. Table two for more than three conductors. Yes, seven is more than three. So what I'm going to do here then is, I have, to, I think I was uh, working in, a, in an environment of um, 75 degrees Celsius. Yes, I'm working in an environment of 75 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to look at this column of 75 degrees Celsius and I'm going to find the amps. Let me go back and see how many amps I calculated here. 70.6 amps. So let me find 70.6 amps here in table two. So the closest I'm finding uh, 
closest I'm finding here is um, 70.64. Now I don't want to undersize it. So I'm going to take this 85. And that is saying that I should have a number four or a four gauge conduit. And that's my answer. So over here, oops, I'm going to just clarify that I'm going to go to table two because of my flowchart, but my flowchart is just based on the code. And find the 75 degree column. Find um, rounded up um, current. Therefore, we need to size this conduit to, let me look at that again, 75 column, my current needs to be rounded up to 85, number four. So it has to be a number four or four gauge conduit. So that's all you do for section four. There are just a million different combinations between the tables, table 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D, giving you those factors and then figuring out which of the sizing tables you go to between table one and two for copper and three and four for aluminum. I hope that's helpful to you.